Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're talking about congruence today, or in other words, we're talking about congruence today. Huh? What is congruence? Then I would write it twice. Well, congruence means that shapes are the same. All right? So a congruent shape is just the same exact shape. So for example, you see a triangle here, and another triangle that's just turned on its end. All right? It's just rotated slightly, but it's the same shape. All right? When we transform shapes or polygons or figures, what we're doing oftentimes is the shape, if it maintains the same characteristics and properties, it can be the same. And that's called an isometric transformation. Isometric just meaning that it maintains the same angle measurements and length measurements and things like that. So we're going to look at some congruent shapes and talk about their properties and make some conclusions based on the fact that they are congruent. So if these shapes are congruent, what is the measurement of side length A and side length B? Well, if we look at our figure here, our rectangle, on the right, we know that the side length A would be congruent to this short side length. And so we know that the measurement of A is equal to 2. B would be congruent to the longer leg leg of the rectangle. In other words, B is equal to 9. So we're able to see that pretty quickly. And that's part of the challenge with congruent figures is that we're trying to figure out which parts are congruent with which other parts. So although this one here seemed like a pretty simple example, we're going to move into some that are not quite so simple. Um, this one here is asking about congruent angles. If angle A here is 35 degrees, and this triangle here is reflected. Um, so that's, that's an important point, is that I'm reflecting this angle so that this angle here is congruent with A. We could also have rotated it around. In this case, the angle measurements are the same, so it wouldn't really matter. But I'm just going to say that we did um, a reflection of this here being our original shape or triangle polygon here, and this one here being our reflection. So angle A would be equal to the angle straight across there from it, so 35 degrees. And angle C is congruent to 110 degrees because it's congruent with this angle here. We would call that A prime, B prime, C prime, and B would be 35 degrees as well. All right, again, this would be a reflection transformation where, um, again, you could have taken, because this is an isosceles triangle, we could have rotated it and gotten the same exact thing. But I'm just going to say we've reflected it. All right, a little bit more practice. Um, this is a practice with a rotation. So that's why we did reflection on the last one, is that I take this figure and I rotate it. And actually, I would be rotating it kind of around, I don't know, point up here or something, just rotating it. And we can see which points are congruent or correspond, I should say, that let's just say it as kind of to give us a starting point, that this point C corresponds with this point up here. All right? And all other points, we're going to basically go off of that. So we're asked to give the measurement of side AB. AB is here. And so that would correspond with this side length here of 5. So we can just go ahead and label that right on there, 5. And then angle CDE, CDE, would correspond with this angle, it would be 100 degrees. All right, 100 degrees. All right, so again, the challenge is finding the exact parts that correspond with each other on these two figures. And I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick later on that will help to, to make that a little bit easier. But I think starting out by labeling this as C prime, and we can go all the way around C, B, a, F, E, and D. 
All right, and then we would be able to actually, and this is a shortcut I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth in just a minute, but if our side length FE is what we're looking for, FE, we can look on here and see FE, right? And if we're labeling them the same way, then we should be able to find the corresponding side length pretty quickly of 4. And also our angle measurement of BAF, which would be BAF 45 degrees. There's BAF, and there would be BAF, 45 degrees. All right, so there's a little bit of practice um, using those congruent polygons. I'm going to talk a little bit now about labeling congruent polygons, um, because sometimes we're given polygons that are labeled like this. Um, a, we'll call this one here A, B, C, D, E. And just because this one has the letters H, I, J, K, L does not mean that we can say A, B, C, D, E is congruent with H, I, J, K, L. In fact, that would be incorrect. So the way that we correctly label um, congruent polygons is that we would give, start at a certain point. And for this, we're going to say A is the point that we're starting with because that's where we started labeling this figure. We called it A, B, C, D, E. We're going to start with point A. A corresponds with point J on our second figure, all right? It's the same spot there, so we would say that those two points correspond. So when we start labeling this or naming this polygon over here, what we're going to do is start at the same point and go in the same order. So figure one or polygon number one, we started here and we went A, B, C, D, E. We're going to do the same thing here. J K, L, H, I, all right? And that is how we would label it. And this is how we would say that they are congruent, all right? These are congruent polygons. A, B, C, D, E is congruent to J, K, L, I, H, I, all right? And labeling in that way has many advantages. And I'll show you one of the advantages here. When you label correctly, you can solve questions about congruent polygons without even needing a picture. So here's an example. If figure A, B, C, D is congruent to G, H, I, J, all right, we're told that. If A, B is equal to 5 centimeters, what is the, the measurement of G, H? We can see that A, B is in the same location in our label as G, H. So we know that line segment AB is congruent to line segment GH. So we can, without even having a picture, I don't know, this could be a square, a rectangle, it could be um, a, a rhombus or a trapezoid, it could be any kind of quadrilateral, um, but we know that AB is congruent to GH because that's the way we're labeling them. Therefore, GH would be equal to 5 centimeters. We don't need a picture because we've labeled it correctly. And that is how you label a polygon and determine congruence.